Hey peeps, I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. The tech wannabe here with an updated and improved version of a video I released about a month ago. We talked about going with either an X570 or B550 for your brand new Ryzen 5000 CPU. The last video still has relevance, but thanks to you guys leaving comments with your thoughts, I feel like we have more valuable information here to share. We will be going over the main differences, the most important thing you should be thinking about, bio support and overclocking. And real quick, before we jump into that, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss any videos from yours truly. So let's talk the main differences between these boards. And in a nutshell, the only difference for most people is going to be that X570 motherboards come with more PCIe Gen 4 lanes. And what this translates to is you being able to have more PCIe 4 hardware take advantage of the increased bandwidth. Though the only real practical use for this right now is SSD storage, as even the fastest PCIe 4 GPUs are currently not saturating these lanes. Though some B550s do support PCIe Gen 4, this usually only comes in the way of one PCIe Times 16 slot and one M.2 drive, which if one high speed drive is enough for you, then fair play, X570 may be extra money that you need not spend. But most importantly, the thing you need to do is actually take into account the features you require, like built-in Wi-Fi, form factor, connectivity. I mean, do you need eight SATA devices or a 10 gigabit LAN? Maybe passive calling or hell, even just how the motherboard looks. Because at the end of the day, unless you're a serious overclocker, most boards won't be performing any differently for you. And it's the features that will actually matter. Obviously, unless you spend like 50 quid on a board, but at that point, you're pretty much lucky if it just works. In terms of build quality with both chipsets, you'll get what you pay for. A 200 pound B550 and a 200 pound X570 will generally be built to a similar standard. There are of course outliers here, so always do research on individual boards before buying. As far as BIOS support goes, please be diligent on whether your choice motherboard has out of the box support for Ryzen 5000. If it doesn't, you'll even need a motherboard with BIOS flashback so that you can update the BIOS with just a USB stick, or you'll need access to an older Ryzen CPU to do the update. And as for overclocking, this was a hot topic on the last video, and it's because it's a bit of a funny one. Because if you're planning to do some serious overclocking, the decision becomes a little bit more difficult. Because B550s are newer, and despite being marketed as a tier below X570, they share similar, if not the same VRMs as the higher X570s, with the addition of some even having newer memory topology, which in layman's terms means the potential for better memory overclocking on a B550. The problem here becomes whether sacrificing the PCIe 4 lanes is worth the extra bit of memory overclocking potential, and honestly, that's going to come down to you and what you want to prioritize. My honest take is that if you are a normal human being and just want fantastic out of the box performance with the best future proofing, you should be going X570. You'll more or less get the same CPU overclocking. And of course you will lose a little bit of potential in memory overclocking, but it's nothing game changing. And I strongly feel that the potential for these slight gains at the sacrifice of more extensive PCIe 4 support, is just not worth it. I really hope that this information helps Help someone out there make their decision just as I hope you liked this video and gave it a big old thumbs up and remember to sub to be part of the coolest tech channel on YouTube and until next time peace